Stephen Hawking was the first scientist to argue that black holes emit radiation, which is now known as Hawking radiation, at a given temperature. Let's use this problem from the International Physics Olympiad to actually find the Hawking temperature of a black hole. Now, this is actually part 3.1 out of a problem uh, from the 2007 International Physics Olympiad. Check out some links in the description for the other parts of the problem. In the previous parts, we've actually shown that the uh, expression for the entropy of a black hole is this one here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the first principle of thermodynamics together with the definition of entropy and, of course, E is equal to mc squared to actually find the Hawking radiation. So, let's get started. First off, we know that d is equal to dq plus dw. Now, remember the definition of entropy tells us that ds is equal to dq over theta. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange for dq and I'm going to get that d e is equal to, well, dq is just equal to ds multiplied by theta, where theta is the temperature. Okay, well, let's assume that dw is equal to zero. There's no work done in this case, an isolated black hole in the middle of space, which is a very valid assumption. Okay, well, d is equal to ds by theta, so I can essentially just rearrange for theta, and theta will be equal to dE by ds. Okay, well, we're almost there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this expression, and I want you to consider just the inverse of this expression. So, let's say that this expression here is equal to ds by dE raised to the power of minus 1. Now, why am I doing this? I'm going to use a mathematical trick uh, which will allow me to differentiate the entropy because we already have an expression for the entropy of a black hole. Okay, well, now let's use one of my favorite equations in physics, and that is that E is equal to mc squared. Now, I'm going to apply this equation for a little infinitesimal mass, which I'm going to say is dm, and that little infinitesimal mass is going to give me a tiny bit of energy, which is going to be dE. Okay, well, now what we can do is we can apply this into here for our expression for the Hawking temperature. So, what we're going to get is ds over, now rather than dE, I'm going to write a little dm, and then c squared raised to a power of minus 1. And just to remove some of the constants, because this is c squared raised to a power of minus 1, I can take a factor of c squared out here, and what I'll be left with is ds by dm, raised to a power of minus 1. Now we can see why I've decided to flip this expression, because I can take this expression here for the entropy, and actually I can just differentiate that with respect to m, which, uh, as you guys can see, uh, is not too bad. Okay, well, uh, should we actually just differentiate that here? So, ds by dm. Well, if I take this expression, if I differentiated that with respect to m, what I'm going to get is 2 multiplied by g, multiplied by Boltzmann's constant, and then the mass, and then divided by this constant, c h. Okay, well, now I'm ready to plug this expression back into this equation, and let's just be quite careful with all of those constants, and what we're going to get is that theta is equal to c squared. Now, let's also flip this expression. So, this, because it's raised to the power of minus 1, we're going to get a factor of c h, and then we're also going to get a factor of 2 g k b, and then multiplied by m, and we essentially now have an expression for the Hawking 
uh, temperature of a black hole. How amazing is that? So let's just tidy up this expression a little bit and uh, let's also give it, a, um, give it a name. So I'm going to, well, uh, label it as Hawking temperature. So the Hawking temperature will be equal to the speed of light raised to the power of three multiplied by h. Let's have a factor of a half and then we have a lot of really fundamental constants and the actual mass of the black hole. And this here is our expression for the Hawking temperature. Now let's have some fun with this equation. Let's plug in some values and actually calculate the Hawking temperature of a black hole of an average size, let's say about five solar masses. So just plugging in some numbers, we're going to get the speed of light raised to the power of three. So let's just assume that the speed of light is three times 10 to the power of eight. Then we're going to cube that. We're going to multiply by h, which is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 34. Then we have a factor of two, very important, multiplied by g, which is the gravitational constant. So that's 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Then we have Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 23, if memory serves me right. And then we're going to need the mass of the black hole. Now in this example, I'm just going to assume that the mass of a black hole is uh, five solar masses. So let's say five, the mass of the sun is about two times 10 to the 30 kilograms, two times 10 to the 30. Okay, well, if I take all of these numbers and uh, we put them into a calculator, we are going to get a um, Hawking temperature of about 9.7 times 10 to the power of minus 7 Kelvin. Now, this is a very, very tiny temperature. So that's like 0.00097 Kelvin. Um, but think about the importance of this result. If black holes have temperature, this means that black holes have radiation. And if black holes radiate, they must lose their mass. So make sure you're tuned in for my next video in which I'm going to be deriving the rate of change of a mass of a black hole. I'll see you guys in the next video.